Hey everybody, Steve Burns here. Okay, week number four. Um, the previous week, we focused on designing the front page of our website. We designed it in both, um, you know, a standalone as well as we, we, we went in here and also created um, art boards, which is going to reflect the desktop, the iPad, and the cell phone. So we're going to do the exact same thing this week. And what I recommend that you do is, is, is go back and review the, the videos from last week because it's going to be the exact same workflow, except we're going to apply it to the interior pages. So look at my, my front page. Um, my whole website, I should, I, let, me, let me put it this way. The front page of the website should reflect what your entire website is going to look like when, you're, uh, when your user is going to, going to have an experience with your site. All right, so here I have my banner, I have my links. Of course, we have the, which is representing our header, the body, and the footer. That's all going to be consistent throughout the entire site. Now, what's going to be different is I'm going to click on Gallery 1, and then I'm going to go into Gallery 1. So what I want to begin accomplishing is designing the Gallery 1 page and the Gallery 2 page and the Gallery 3 page. So um, this week... Um, it should be pretty easy, but it'll be probably be a little more time consuming in that um, you're going to have to design the desktop, the iPad view, and the iPhone view for each of your interior pages. Okay, so I'm going to want to see a JPEG for each one of your um, interior pages, basically representing three separate JPEGs um, for each interior page representing your desktop iPad or your mobile app, mobile pad, and your cell phone representation, okay? So same thing as last week, but each page, each interior page that you create, you're going to need to give me three separate JPEGs. All right, I'm going to develop one page just uh, so, so it gives you a good idea um, as to uh, your workflow, and I'm going to start with my home page. So I brought up my home page again. Now notice I renamed it Gallery 1. So once you bring up your home page, all you need to do is go to File, Save As, and then save it under another name. Now, um, I have one called, called Web Layout Number 1. That should be called Home Page, by the way. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll leave, leave it there now, but call it, call it Home Page is a good idea to do so. This page is titled Gallery 1. All right. So I'm going to save it here. It already did one, so I'm going to go replace it. I saved it as a TIFF file that also will main, you know, keep my, my layers and uh, other effects intact. All right, now, now you get to see, understand why organizing your stuff in groups is so very important. Because now I can go in here and decide what to keep and what to throw away. I'm going to want to keep my, uh, the footer, of course, is which is down here at the bottom. I'm, wanted, I'm going to want to keep my navigational bar as I'm clicking it off and on. And let me go ahead and kind of zoom in a little closer so you can see this a little better. I'm going to also want to keep my header. Looking right up here at the top with the, with the nav bar. The thing that I'm going to want to change uh, for my interior pages is going to be my body, which is all in one group. Okay. Now, um, here is where you start to see... Um, why it's so important to organize this stuff in groups that you can control independently. Because now all I want to do is completely get rid of the body and replace it with something else. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and click a new layer button. Well, I'll tell you, not a new layer button. Let's do a new group, right? Just click the button right here, third, the third one over from the right, and that makes a new group. Okay. I'm, it's, it's above the body. That's fine. I'm going to call that group, let's call this one body, um, body gallery one. Okay, body for gallery one. And now I'm going to go grab all the images for gallery one. I'm going to populate this space with it. I'm also aware that I'm going to have to scroll down. I'm going to want to see the larger picture of each one of my art pieces. And I want to have each one dominate dominate the view, and then you can just scroll straight down to view the other images. To do so, I'm going to have to elongate this a little bit, right? So hit the C key for my crop tool. Select everything like so. And then I'm going to just grab the bottom here and 
pull it straight down, just like so, and hit enter. Now, I'm over exaggerating it possibly, but I'm just going to just give myself some place, some something to play with. Here's my um, my footer at the top. Don't worry about that now. We'll, we'll come back and we'll make adjustments for that later. For later. So let's just turn the eyeball off on on that off um, for the current time. So um, now let's go stay in the body gallery. Now, body gallery one. Go over here to my bridge. And I'm going to just offset bridge just like this, right? So I'm going to start with the first image for gallery one. I'm going to now they all should be numbered like one A, one B, one C. So they're in the order that I want them in. And I can select them all. Okay. And then drag them all in. There. Okay. So if I hit enter on the keyboard, I should have all my images right there. It populates all of them in here. And it looks like I only grabbed a couple of them. Hmm, that's very odd, right? Oh, there they are, but did not. Okay, I just had to keep enter and hit enter on each one of them. That's a little bit of a different feature for the new version of Photoshop. All right, so there they all are. We can see in gallery one, in the body for gallery one, which that was supposed to be the case, and what I neglected to do in this case was actually have the body gallery one selected. No big deal. Let's go ahead and select it. All of these. Select the first first layer. I held shift key down and select the last layer that, that, that targeted everything in between them. With them all targeted, click and hold on one of the thumbnail images and just place it right inside of the gallery one folder and release. There it is. Okay. All right, so body gallery one folder is in there, so I can turn those off and on. They're all there, okay? All right, so let's organize this. Um, let's go right up here, and you can see they're kind of backwards. You got the F at the top, and the, I like to reorganize things, so A, B, C, D, and E. So I'm gonna go just drag them in order. There's my A. Go ahead and scroll this all the way down so I can see everything. There's my, um, go grab my B. Put it right underneath the A. Pull this down a little bit. Let's target the C, D, and this is just for my own personal organization. E, and then F is at the end, okay? All right, hit the V key for the move tool, okay? Or I can click and drag it right here. Um, so that the move tool and our board is in the same location on the top left hand corner of the toolbar, but we want the move tool. I'm going to target the move tool. I'm going to go ahead and select the first image holding the shift key. I'm going to go to A, holding the shift key, it'll drag it straight on up. Okay, just like so. I'm going to do the same thing for B, drag it to there. You can see the smart guides there telling me exactly what those two are exactly where I want to be in terms of spacing. Go to my C key. Again, holding my shift key allows me to constrain it. Do something like this. And and in fact, what I'm gonna what I'm going to accomplish next, I want to make these larger, to be quite honest. So I want to select them all so I can enlarge them all at one time. Or I can just close up the folder Target the entire folder, Command T, everything's chosen. And let's go ahead and grab this. If I hold the Alt key down, it'll resize from the center. See, I want about, I'm looking at my horizontal images. That's about as far as I'm going to want all that to go. Now I'm going to hit the down arrow key it's just to nudge all this down, like so, that that top one's going to be about, uh, about so far away from the top of the, um, the navigational bar. That looks good. All right, we'll go ahead and hit enter on my keyboard, done. So it's that easy. So when you when I dragged all these images in there, it automatically became smart objects, right? So I haven't lost any detail. Okay, let's grab this. And so we can look right, that right down here in the bottom right-hand corner of each of these thumbnails. We see that little symbol that's telling us that, of course, that's a smart object. All right, let's go to number three. And space bar, drag it on up. 
And let's see what we have number three. I'm holding there. So number three, I'm going to do approximate it right about there. Go to uh, D, which is number four. All right, we're going to, and we're going to have E, which is number five. We have two more to go. Now, I'm going to need to stretch this down more. Command zero, pop it to full frame. Actually, let's pull this out a little bit. Select everything with the crop tool. Drag it and hold the shift key to keep it coming straight down. There we go. I'm going to need some additional space because I'm, when I'm in a web, pa web page or the view is in a web page viewing this, I'm going to be scrolling straight down. So vertical scrolls are fine. So there's my E key. Hit my V key as in Victor for the, for the move tool. I'm in the right layer. Shift and drag it. Take it somewhere right about there. I'm going to probably want to, want to place more spacing in here because I'm, I'm the idea is to have titles as well. So I'm going to grab the bottom one, bring it down. All right. So I'm just getting the basic um, um, you know, organization for this. So it gives me an idea um, what type, where I'm going to want to place the text. So this, I need more space, right? So I'm going to pull it back just a little bit. It's kind of small, but C key for the crop tool. Select everything and go ahead and pull it down to give myself some more space. Okay, sit back and relax. I'm going to hit the Command S. Save that one so I don't lose it. Okay, and let's go hit the V key to go back to the Move tool. I'm going to pull in a little more here, and this is essentially what I want to do. I'm thinking about placing the the title of the text beneath all of this, okay? And let's, um, yeah, I'm gonna place them all beneath all this, so I'm gonna give this a little space. Let me try one text real quick. Hit the T key, foreground color is white. I wanna utilize my agency FB as I, as I always have been. Target, all right, so. It's kind of small, getting close. We're gonna increase the sizing there. And I think I've actually resized the last one, but we're gonna keep all these consistent. Once I have this done, then um, we can see my little smart guide is showing up and saying, okay, that's the center right there. I'm going to release it as soon as I get that center. Once done, hit my T key, go and select this, oops, sorry. I want to get, get too much. I can go right up here to my text tools there, right? So let's pull let's, let's put let's place the text at the very top. Okay, I'm gonna put all the text at the very top. So here, double click it. And that's the wrong one actually. That was one I accidentally made. So I'm gonna hit the delete key to get rid of it. Let's go down the bottom. That's the right one that I want. So I turn it off and on. There it is. Let's place them all at the top. And this one is titled Digital Ecstasy. So I'm going to double click it. And I think I prefer to, to have it all caps. Digital Ecstasy. Okay, I think that's how you spell ecstasy. <laughs> All right, so so and I also want to make sure that this is going to be centered. So I want to I want to justify it right up here in my options bar. Once I target my text tool, look in your options bar. You have some some immediate options available for you. Use them, and it'll help make things faster. Target this one right in the middle. Um, it's showing the the center justification there. Okay, um, I think that will help. Now I'm going to go and hit the enter on my keyboard on the numeric side of my keyboard. And I'm going to pull this and I'm going to center it right there. Okay. All right. So all I need to do is make this a little larger, I believe. Command T. 
If I hold down the option of the alt key, it'll resize from the center. And I'm thinking that's probably good enough. Uh, I think S I want to make sure I, I spelled ecstasy correctly, right? So I don't want to screw that up. So if I ever have a problem, because I'm, I'm an artist, I'm not an English teacher. So I'm going to come right over here. Go to my website, handy dandy web web page, and we're gonna spell it. Make sure I have it spelled correctly, so I can just put it right up here. Um, ecstasy. I think um, it's spelled with an S, I believe, and not with a uh, with a C. Yep, it looks like it's right. Let's go change it. Double click it. And replace that with an S. There we go. That's right. Okay. Now, at this point, we're going to just drag and drag and drop it on down. So once I have that position, the way that I like it visually, I'm going to hold my Alt key while I'm in the Move tool. So with the move tool activated, hold the alt key. You see the double arrow there? Hold shift key while holding alt key. So alt and shift. Shift constrains it to one direction. And it brings it straight on down. You can see that. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm do that once again. Okay. So alt key while on the move tool. Hold down the shift button. And it will constrain it right about there. Okay, and then name it whatever you want in this one. So that's the bottom one. I'm going to go ahead and drag it beneath it just to keep the ordering the same. And um, I believe this one was called Prism. And I'm going to want that to be in all caps as well there. Okay, so you see where we're going with this one. So now I'm going to add for my gallery titles from my artwork all the way down until we complete it here. Okay. The last thing I need to do is uh, get my footer, right? So I turn the footer off. And I'm going to turn it back on, target the folder footer, hold the shift key while, uh, while again, I'm in the move tool and just drag it on down like this. Oop, went down too far. Okay. Let's bring it back. Let's get in closer. And I believe the footer... And, and again, a common, leaving room for other text to come into here, I'm going to, I'm going to assume the footer is probably going to end right about there. Okay. After I complete repositioning these with the titles for each one, each one's going to come down a little bit more. So allowing a little bit more space down here so the footer is going to be at the end. Right. And then you can use your crop tool just to bring it up to here. And that's going to be my gallery one. That'll be the, the first of my interior pages I'm going to accomplish. Now, one other thing that I might want to do, and it's more of a creative call on my part, maybe a practical one as well, is, is for the interior pages, I might want to go back to home very quickly, allow the user to go back to home. So I'm probably going to put, want to put home right here on the, on the top left. I could just make this whole banner image clickable. So that when you click on it, you automatically go to home. That might be might not be a bad idea as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and go and put a home bar up there. So we need to go to the navigational links. I want to close up the gallery body, right? Uh, navigational links are there. Drop them down. Okay. And you can see these are kind of in a disorder too. So I want to drag this to the top, put them in the order that they're in. Book, book books and DVDs. Um, we have workshops next. Drag that on up next. We've got our 3D, which is already there. The artist is next, and then it ends with contact art us. So I'm gonna go to books and DVDs and hit Command J to duplicate the layer. Then just um, hold my Shift key while I'm in the Move tool. Once again, I gotta be in that Move tool there. Drag that on over just like so. Okay. Double click it. And we're going to type in home. All right. Enter on a numeric side or hit the little checkbox up here on the options bar. And then go ahead and move this on over. So shift constrains it right about there. So all of my interior pages 
Make sure it's lined up just right now. Let's get that in there. There we go. Okay. So um, now these are not in all caps. So let's go back to the home. And the first of the letter are caps, but the um, let letters afterwards are in lower case. So I'm going to keep that theme. Hit enter on, on the numeric side of my keyboard or click that little checkbox there. There it is. Okay. So the interior pages are all going to have that home. That will be clickable. So when I click it, it goes right back to what? I will turn this off here. Not that one, but the uh, the gallery, body gallery, and turn back on the body, the initial body. It'll go back to the front page. Okay. So when I click on it. So this is how we're going to start organizing all your interior pages. Base it off of your main theme, which should be your front page, and then... Um, there may be uh, a slight addition of links for your interior pages. Um, and then make sure every one of your interior pages that you're creating is going to look exactly the way you want it to look on the website. You're going to hand in JPEGs for each of your interior pages. And remember, for each one has to have three JPEGs, one for your desktop, one for your mobile um, pad, and the other one for your cell phone device in terms of sizing. So go back to last week's video. Watch those again. Um, watch this again as well, and uh, you should be good to go. All right. Um, should be a pretty easy one this week, just a little bit more time consuming that you have to create uh, a few more pages. Then once we're complete with these, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to um, use Dreamweaver to um, um, to alter this, to make the, to create a, a website. And then you have a lot to look forward to later in the semester as once you learn Dreamweaver, um, how to custom create your website, then you're going to learn how to use um, other template form um, of options um, to um, to create your website as well, like like Wix or 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 WordPress and so forth. Okay, um, we're gonna we're gonna focus on WordPress uh, for this particular class, but they're all pretty much the same type of architecture or similar architecture, I should say. Okay, all right, everybody, have fun with this project. Um, looking forward to seeing your work. Steve Burns signing off.